Today we're working on the 1990 Ford Maverick and I cannot wait. I wanted to make this video so I can tell you pretty much the whole story about Shorty. I feel like I didn't document it very well considering there was so much going on when I was building this car. I got dirt all over my shirt. Anyway, let's tell you this story about Shorty. Now, Shorty, I met probably about over 10 years ago and a couple of good friends of mine bought the car and I immediately wanted that car. So it was absolutely gorgeous. It was pretty much bolt stock standard petrol TB42 and I wanted it. I wanted it right or wrong. But they had big plans to do it up but sort of life gets in the way and then that does not end up happening. So fast forward about 10 or so years, they contact me and said, hey, do you still want the short wall base? I was like, yes, yes I do. But it was at the worst time. So we pretty much just finished installing the electrical system in the off grid house. So we had very little fun money to play with. Then from that point on, fast forward about six months, I managed to get the money together, contacted them straight back and said, hey, I want to take that car. So yes, went to Skids, picked up the car trailer, went and picked up the car, brought it home. Now, this car, they were in the process of doing it up. So it was completely stripped. There was literally not a bolt left in the engine bay. All the interior has been stripped out of it. It was just pretty much a bare shell and buckets and buckets of parts. But me being me, I just, I just had to do it. Anyway, so my original plan was just to throw the TV 42 back in it and just run it as it was, enjoy the car, and drive the car for once, for what it actually was back in the day. Bits and pieces of the research of the car, I kind of wanted to convert it to Barrett, but like this is a, over a span of, I don't know, a couple of months, this car is sitting in my driveway, not doing anything. So that was pretty much like a couple of months worth of um, research and stuff like that, of figuring out what I wanted to do with the car. So was I gonna like LS swap it? Was I gonna just put the original motor back in? Then I had a great idea that I was gonna put a four litre Jeep motor in it. That would have pissed everyone off. So it's like, I don't know what to do. And I was flicking through Instagram one day and then I seen a post from Elite Performance Tuning. So they're the same guys that end up doing the computer. Uh, they had a, I think it's like a 75 series Troopy and that had an NA bar in it. I'm like, wow. That is refreshing. That is what I want. I just want, I just want an NA. Cause I've had NA cars before and you just flog the hell out of them and they just keep on going. Whereas turbo, I've also had turbo cars before and you're always worried what's gonna break and how badly it's gonna break if you get a little bit hard on the gas or dump the clutch or something like that. There's always that thing in the back of your mind. NA, pfft, no one cares. If it breaks, just buy a new one. It's set in stone. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to keep to a petrol motor and also gonna keep it NA so that way it just works, right? You're probably gonna get upset with me saying, you should've went turbo, why'd you do all that and you didn't go turbo? I wanted an NA. So now I come to the next problem of actually trying to find a NA motor for my patrol. So looking everywhere and the research that I did do about the research that I did do about these motors and talking to Elite, which are great guys by the way, if you're looking to do a conversion, talk to them first, they'll tell you everything you need. So when trying to find the motor that I wanted for Shorty, I didn't really like the look of the, the curved intake on the BAs, which obviously you can change, but I didn't want to change anything. My whole idea was if I wanted to get in and then drive this like across Australia, something breaks, everything will be a factory option, whereas like how many bloody Fords are laying in wrecking yards, you know what I mean? So that was the idea. And also, I know me, I know I'd get bored with doing it, so eventually, over time, I would probably throw a turbo on it or something. So the boys at Elite Performance recommended going like an FG motor. So an FG motor was stronger than a factory BA, NA. So that's the way I decided to go. And plus, if I really got bored of the car and then eventually wanted to sell it, it was more appealing to like a P plate or someone like that that wanted that sort of car but everyone sort of saturated the market with turbo butts and then once they get their open license then they can go on and turbo it if they wanted to. 
So yes, here's me looking for an FG motor. I've searched all the auction places, trying to find like a crashed one, end up coming across like a really nice one, but I couldn't pull, couldn't pull apart a good Falcon just to have the body laying in the yard. Just couldn't do it. So after a couple of months of looking for a motor, I'm, I come across one in a wrecking yard. So I immediately bought that one. That motor, and because we're trying to finish the house, I didn't really have anywhere to put it, so that literally sat at the farm under a tarp for I don't know how long. That motor's sitting there, the car's sitting there, there's boxes and boxes of parts sitting in the back of Shorty, and I just did not have time to start it. So we're pretty much at the stage now where all the parts are collected, but we just need to put it together. One thing that I also did want on Shorty was the grandpa visor, the one that sits above the windscreen. Always wanted one of them on like every car I've ever had. So they're pretty hard to find as it sits because first thing you do when you get them, you bloody rip them off and throw them in the bin. So a good mate of mine had one. So the sun visor gets dropped off and then while talking to him, which is a good mate of mine, he was explaining that he's getting rid of all the stuff and he wants to sell the house. And the house that he was talking about is the one we are in right now. So that sun visor get, getting dropped off to me was the lead for us to buying our dream house. Also that same sun visor was actually on a GQ patrol ute that I drove when I was about 10 years old, which was our old neighbor's Bertha. He's the same guy with the bobcat that helped me with all the slab and everything at the uh, off-grid house. He is a top bloke and that car sort of sat there for a very long time and eventually got sold. But I did want that car, but I just didn't have the money for it at the time. So not only is that sun visor off a car that I drove when I was 10 years old and really enjoyed the car, and really enjoyed the car, it was also a massive lead on the house that we bought. So moving on after the sun visor was dropped off, we had to jump through all the hoops of trying to buy our first house. So managed to get that across the line. Uh, no thanks to a my original broker, but the new broker was absolutely amazing. So we got our first house. Then that was the drama of having to move everything to here. So once again, all the car, all the boxes got packed up in the back of Shorty, on the back of a car trailer, and then delivered here. Once Shorty was delivered, it, I pretty much rolled it straight in the shed. This is my next project. This is what I want to do. I'm not stopping until this is done. Well, slap it in the can, slap it on the car, away we go. Can he be here today doing the engine mounts because I do not feel confident welding engine mounts in. We have Jed from Locked In Off Road. He's going to be doing the car builder's sound deadening while I drink beer. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm going to bolt. I'm going to start bolting the clutch and everything to our barrow motor. Like I was saying, it's going to be NA. It's going to be an NA vehicle. So I got a standard clutch going in. Kenny's doing the engine mounts, and by the time I finish that, hopefully. We can put this in, bolt it in, and it never has to come out again. So Kenny's tacked the engine mounts in, so I'm gonna put the motor back in and then put a bolt through and make sure that they're in the right spot because it's a lot easier to grind off a tack than it is a full weld. So I'll slot the motor in, see if it fits, and then if it does, Kenny's gonna burn away.
hands up. Oh. I dad. Oh, I didn't do any welding, but good job. Yeah, we need to go time for another beer, to be honest. I think so. <laughs> the motor's now out, so we're burning the engine mouth in. Let's go! The computer next week is going into elite performance to be, they're gonna work their magic on it because apparently you need to turn off some things. And then we're gonna come back, put it in, and then hopefully it's just gonna be a turnkey operation. So I still have the transfer case to put in, I still have the drive shaft, still have the air box, radiator, all those little goody tinker bits. But as, as it sits right now, the motor is bolted in. So that is a win. Now that was brilliant, that was such a great day with those boys, we ended up just getting on the beers and welding shit together, throwing the motor in, it was, it's really a good day spent with mates. So yeah, massive shout out to Kenny, he's got a YouTube channel, Kenny B if you want to go check it out, and Jed, he's got one as well, which is locked in off-road. Now when it comes to seats with Shorty, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted those traditional XR6 seats, and because the whole car is technically, it's a, um, because the whole car is technically a Ford Maverick, I wanted to keep to that Ford theme. So the Ford theme was like Falcon radiator, like Falcon seats, Falcon header tank, everything was from a Falcon. So after I ended up getting the motor, I needed to buy a whole nother car pretty much. So it's a bit of a run around in how it actually went down, but I ended up tracking down a BA Ford Falcon just for the seats, but it ended up being a lifesaver with everything else like the radiator, power steering lines, um, bits and pieces like bolts and stuff like that. So it was truly a godsend and really helped with actually building the car. The aircon works. So I've just purchased a Ford Falcon, I believe it's a BA or something like that. And it's so filthy, I love it. The front wheel bearing sounds like metal on metal. The window doesn't go up very fast. That's normal for Falcons, I'm sure of it. Made it home. What do you reckon, baby? Um, you like it? Yeah. Yeah? Biggest trouble I run into is putting these seat brackets in is because I didn't have the original hardware from the start. Other than that, this kit was straightforward, easy, bolt-in kit. It was only because I was dealing with a bucket of bolts it probably took so long, but the kit itself is top-notch, very simple kit. It's just bolt together and then you're done. You have XR6 seats in your truck. From pretty much the, the start of the whole thing, I wanted to put emu wings on this thing. 
Now, Emu Wing has always been real good to me. They're a great team. And because the shorty windows are like so big, I wanted to use them on this thing as well. So from there, we put the Emu Wings on. First step, we're gonna to refer to our instructions because I probably shouldn't be doing this because real men don't read instructions. Remove rear window. Check. Apply pinch weld. Apply our glue, make sure it's where we need it to be, and then stick it on a place. Alright, so our next step is to throw a frame in, make sure it's aligned, and then clamp her into place. Let's hope I haven't stuffed this up. Oh, uh, I already have. So we've got our brackets just firmly mounted in place. So I'm gonna add the weather strip now. Another thing I wanted to do was have sort of like seal protection on the shorty. Now, it wasn't going to be like a full on off rotor, like I'm probably not as hectic as the Denny Ute. It was more just like somewhere, it was more just something I can get in, go for a camping trip, have the winch on the front. Like, yes, it's still going to be full on, but it's not going to be outrageous, which it probably ends up being anyway. So the next step was to throw some rock sliders on. So DIY Customs end up sending out a kit. They're pretty much a pre-bent, pre-notched kit that you just put together and then weld to it yourself. That was a great day. Rock sliders. Rock sliders make even the most boringest cars look pretty aggressive. And that's where DIY Customs come in. So with that video, I pretty much couldn't have done it without Rob. So he's got a YouTube channel, Bam Bam Fabrications. Make sure you go check him out. He does amazing stuff with fabricating and building cars like that. So once the rock sliders went on, it sort of went on to a big pause. So I ended up getting the El Camino, then fixing that up. And then I got the Mustang and I'm in the process of fixing that one up. And then yes, a couple of other cars, which I've always wanted. So I sort of put my focus towards that. And plus, we were waiting on the harness to come back from Hooten's harnesses. In a previous video, we threw the four litre barrel straight into it, mocked everything up, ready to go, and then since then, I've been waiting on the harness. And guess what's arrived to that? Don't tell me. The harness! Oh Plan is wiring on, engine back in, exhaust hook back up. Hopefully we fix the clutch issues and make it a car again after we pull apart. Jay and I are going ahead and put all the harness on, so I need to get some injectors. That's still on the list to grab. But as it sits right there, that harness is done. Jay, you've done heaps today. What's that in your hand? Hydration. Are you a beer? <laughs> so like I said, Jay's here to drink my beers and be my support to me putting this together. It really wasn't that hard. I think the only thing that was hard about the whole thing was remembering where everything goes. All the plugs are the same. 
it's a really simple harness, so it's not that hard. But while Jay and I have been working on that, Bam's been smashing this thing out, putting the clutch on. We ended up going with a 75 or 47 series slave cylinder. Yeah, we think it's gonna work. Um, with all things uh, welding and grinding, we can make it happen. So it should work, but we're gonna find it directly when we start the smarter bug in. Yes. So the reason I went with the 47 series slave is it comes out straight where the what, GQ one come out on like a weird 45 degree angle and there's not enough room in there for the exhaust pipe and the slave cylinder. We're gonna leave that chip in there? The chip? Yeah. Yes, the chip must stay. <laughs> I'm guessing because it's been sitting for so long, the rats have built, built a nest in there. I think it's good luck at this stage. 100%. <laughs> the chip needs to stay so it gets in the clutch and then goes all mushy. So while we've got all the energy, let's uh, grab that big donk, slide it back in and make things happen. Big donk? Yeah, yeah. It's not as big as your ones. Oh, let's not get the measuring tape out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can you do that, what, that thing you do where you slap it and then the motor's in? Slap it with the motors in. You do it with your rap videos, you slap the bonnet and it's all done. Can you transition. just do this? I can do a transition as well. Oh, is it a tran that's not magic? No, it's a transition. It's oh. a magic transition. I thought it was magic and you just slap it and it's done. <laughs> I tried it heaps of times really, on this yeah, watching your videos and it doesn't, doesn't work. So we got our pretty much precision anti-theft system right here. So if I touch this wire on the battery, that will gauge the starter and we should start up. Vacuum off or something. Leaking. Bits on. That's the first time it's moved. First time. Since I bought it. Yes. I bought this thing as a shell. Now. 
wants to move. Throttle's still a bit. Yeah. I don't know, we might. I don't know what the sensor is on there, maybe clean it or something. Maybe. I reckon we move the Mustang and see how far we can reverse. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> Let me just um, fire up the old Mustang. So basically the harness come back to me. It did take a bit of time, but in the end, it's it's beautiful, it's great work. Everything just plugged and played and it just it just works. So yeah, you could be a little bit upset that it took so long, but at the end of the day, it just works. So there's no dramas, just everything plugged in. And once we got the computer back, it pretty much fired up. So that is the story of Shorty, how I got it and the journey along the way. It's been very difficult documenting this whole thing because it's just been so spread out and all the events over the past year. So new paint arrives next week so that hopefully we can get the video out for that and then the car is coming with me to Motor Madness Show to be at the stationary display with Bam Bam and all those blokes. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.